Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Professor Avi Loeb's Project Galileo and the search for extraterrestrials on Earth, the UAP phenomena. Um, really interesting. I was hoping and waiting for this to come out. I just listened to an interview on Event Horizon, and yesterday I had also gotten a little bit of foreword about Project Gal Galileo, which is basically he got some private funding to set up some telescopes and search for UAPs, especially UAP data. I don't know if he has infrared sensors. I don't know if he has radar. That's a little bit more costly if he had some kind of radar equipment attached or, or concurrent with these cameras. All the better. Okay, all the better. Um, and while I think it's great, I think it'll be limited. It would be much, much more useful to have the Department of Defense, the Navy, the Air Force declassify some of their uh, radar data and declassify some of their UAP data uh, since Lou Elizondo says they have HD uh, footage of these things. And I suspect that there's a lot more in terms of radar data that we could use, all right? However, um, that is actually not the biggest, most awesome thing about this. The fact is that it, it again starts the discussion. And I've been looking at some of the comment sections, both in the Event Horizon podcast comment sections and in some stuff I saw yesterday. And the personal attacks have started already, and they've started just because Professor Avi Loeb says, um, just consider the idea that, that this data has some robustness to it and ha has some validity to it and deserves investigation. And people are talking about he's wasting millions of dollars. I think so far he's got about $1.7 million from a private donor to set this up. That's nothing. That's, that's not even a drop in a bucket. That's like a drop in the drop that gets dropped in the budget, okay? Think of the trillions of dollars spent on the uh, stimulus packages, for example. Um, you'll see that, that government throws a lot of money around, and none of this costs the taxpayer anything. Um, but people are attacking him. They're calling him a hack. One person wrote down, he's just pretending to be a Harvard professor. Um, you can't pretend that. You, when Harvard hires you as a professor and tenures you, you're not pretending. You actually are a Harvard professor. It's kind of like saying, you know, it's kind of like saying Muhammad Ali was pretending to be a world champion, you know, or, or that a rocket flying in space is pretending to fly. He epitomizes what a Harvard professor is. Someone doing very original research, publishing, I think, over 800 uh, papers, uh, so on and so forth, right? So let's stop with the personal attacks. And um, a lot of people just don't like the subject of UAPs, UA UFOs, and they're saying, you're not going to find anything, so don't investigate. Uh, that's not how science is done, folks, okay? There's a reason why he called it the Galileo Project. Galileo, you know, was looking through a telescope, and he's like, oh my God, these things are orbiting around us, are orbiting around the sun. We're orbiting around the sun. Our moon orbits around us, and we, along with the planets, orbit around the sun. This is what's happening. Look, I can see it through the telescope. I can do math. And the philosophers and, and the theocrats were like, no, sorry, um, that's not how it is. Whatever you're looking at is the work of the devil. You're under house arrest for the rest of your life. And, you know, I think he got out of house arrest by signing a confession. But, you know, one of the legends says that um, as he, after he signed it, he said in Latin, Epersi mueve, which means nonetheless it moves. Like, I confess here in writing so I can go out and live my life and, you know, not be a prisoner anymore. That, you know, the earth does not move or around the sun, but yet the sun moves around the earth. But he said, nonetheless, it moves. He meant the world. Okay, So I think uh, Avi Loeb is in that position, but he's a tenured professor, and he is, he, I think, was, if not still is, the former, uh, you know, the head of astronomy at, at Harvard University, which is, you know, a very prestigious university. Okay. Um, 
But I think this discussion that is starting is so precious. It is so important. Controversy. I mean, sooner or later, Michio Kaku and Neil deGrasse Tyson are going to have to deal with this. They're probably going to have a talk or a debate or an interview, and, and things are going to start going back and forth. And uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Michio Kaku, for example, are very public figures. People love him. And at some point, it's going to bring attention to this. And the long-awaited conversation we probably should have had around 1969 with our scientific community is set to happen now. And I'm very happy about that. I think it's very joyous. But I want to address a few points, okay, uh, that, that I saw in these comment sections. And, uh, you know, again, I, I think that we need to address this. We need to really explain to people why this is important. One guy one guy said, well, a UFOlogist in Congress got got to demand this UAP report and it's, you know, building false, false confidence. First of all, that was a congressman, a Democratic congressman, as a matter of fact, I think from Arizona, I forget his name, but um, he's not a UFOlogist. He's never published on the subject. He doesn't do interviews on that subject. He does nothing on the subject of ufology. Um, he's a duly elected official in a democracy with a duty that, you know, an oath of office, part of which says that, you know, like in the military, you will defend the United States against enemies foreign and domestic. And I believe his biggest concern, as it is mine, is that these phenomena, these objects penetrate our airspace they are clustered around our nuclear assets. And let me clarify what a nuclear asset is. For example, is a nuclear weapons facility, a launch facility, a nuclear asset? Yes. What about an Air Force base that has bombers on it? These bombers have the capacity to carry nuclear weapons and sometimes do. Okay. Well, things like B-52s, stealth bombers, sometimes they're pre-positioned with these munitions. They're on duty uh, because, you know, we can't we can't ever not be ready for a nuclear bombing run or a nuclear retaliatory strike. We need to be able to prevent attacks to our country from nuclear armed powers of any nation. Then what about a naval air station? A naval air station is a nuclear asset. What about an aircraft carrier? I believe quite a few aircraft carriers are powered by nuclear generators. What about a nuclear powered submarine or a nuclear armed submarine? And often those are synonymous. That is a nuclear asset. These are civilization-destroying weapons. Okay. For example, what if we un unleashed a quarter of our nuclear arsenal overseas? The resulting toxic gas cloud would probably destroy us. Don't you get it? Right? We. Ha this is Missouri, and I've had people tell me that the haze that we've been seeing in our skies from time to time is actually from the California wildfires. Right. Uh, years ago, when I was a much younger person, you had the volcanic eruption of Mount St. Helens. Right. That was affecting the way the sunsets looked in Africa. That ash and dust. Right. So these weapons are extremely important. Many of them are from that representative's home state. <clears throat> and it is his duty to say, why is our airspace so easily penetrated? Why are our nuclear assets not secure, right? And it is not a as a matter of fact, there is it is not a waste of time and money. There is no better spending of government time and money than to make sure that civilization destroying weapons are not exposed and vulnerable. Okay, without a doubt, whether you believe this is an extraterrestrial thing or Russian drones, either way, I don't care who they are. They need to stay away from our nukes, and we need to find out why we can't make them stay away. Okay, there's nothing we can do. Another thing is someone said, well, you know, I just find it hard to believe that these aliens would come all the way over here and be so shy and try not to be detected, which, Bubba, that ain't true. None of that is true. All of these objects, these phenomena, appear to be ostentatious. They appear to follow our jets. They make themselves known. They react to the jets. They stay in the air. Sometimes they fly directly to our jets, and sometimes they fly parallel. They are, there's, 
nothing about them that appears to be shy. Again, this is false. This is absolute falsehood, right? Now, moving right along. Um, it's such a waste of time and money. What, what should we do next? Look for Bigfoot. Look, connecting this to another topic will get you nowhere, but, but make rational, sane people think that you are not rational and sane, that you don't know how to argue a point, how to make conclusions, how to present things verbally. It makes me think I'm dealing with a, an adult, but with a child's mind. All right. Um, there is so much that will be gained by Project Galileo, because either way, you, you put more telescopes and cameras in the sky. You create more observations of weather conditions. You create more observations of visual conditions. Um, you're still collecting data for science. For example, we have SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, right? Even though we didn't, quote unquote, find any extraterrestrials or, or any evidence, we created lots of astronomical data. And that's a lot of what our cosmology is based on now, you know, um, the discovery of so-called discovery of dark matter, which we haven't we haven't like looked at it or picked it up, but we are inferring its existence by the way regular matter clusters and and how the laws of gravity operate, right? So either way, we'll produce abundant new data sets for science, right? Um, and you know, a lot of people are just accusing him of fraud and abuse and waste. That's called slander, folks. If you don't have evidence for such a thing, merely speculating and saying, I have a strange feeling, that's not, not only is that not science, that's not how the law works. That's not how society works. If I simply look at someone and I say, I have a feeling he's a bad person, let me start telling everybody he's bad and don't give this person money. Uh, don't, don't do business with him. You know, don't, don't trust this lady. She could be a child abuser. How do you know? I have a bad feeling. Not the way it works, folks. Right? So, Project Galileo, I think, will be maybe fruitful. It may yield important information. I mean, what could be more worthy than securing our nu nuclear assets and making sure that our airspace isn't easily penetrable? Okay? it's We need to stop thinking of this as a search for extraterrestrials. Okay? We need to start thinking of this as a search for what is happening to our military, to our nukes, to our national security, okay? If we discover that every single time an aircraft carrier task force goes out there and responds to one of these things, that it is a simultaneous radar, camera, infrared, and pilot error, and, you know, mechanical glitch and pilot error involving several ships and several aircraft. Man, we need to fix that. <laughs> we need to find, if we can be definitely determine that these are all false positives occurring with all these multiple military equipment and personnel, man, that's such a vulnerability in our military that, that we have addressed. If we find out that we're training our, our naval air aviators wrong and that they're misidentifying things 113 times in a row over the course of years. Man, that's important. Man, what, what, what a gain that is for our country. If we're like, holy crud, the Russians and Chinese have drones and probes capable of doing this off of our coasts? That's a chilling reality we need to respond to. Because apparently the trillions of dollars we spend uh, on defense are absolutely useless in securing us. We need to think of something else. Maybe we need to make a diplomatic approach. Maybe we need to spend more money on spies to steal this technology. Right? And personally, I, I think another thing we need to look at is the ocean. It seems like a lot of these things operate over the ocean. Maybe that's just the data we get. And some of them appear to be going into the ocean. Now, if I'm going to hide something on this planet, if I'm going to hide a, an entire highly technologically advanced civilization on this planet, the ocean's my best bet. Because no one's monitoring the ocean like this. right? The satellites won't tell you what's at the bottom of the trenches and so on and so forth. Maybe, maybe this can be a way to advance oceanography. But 
it is our duty to protect our country from enemies foreign and domestic. And furthermore, it is our duty to the entirety, to the sum total of humanity, to make sure that not one nuclear device, not one active nuclear power plant, poses a threat to this earth and to this environment. If these things are constantly penetrating our airspace and this causes uh, a nuclear launch or a nuclear accident, it affects the ecology of the entire planet. And since they appear to be clustered around multiple nuclear assets, it could threaten our very existence as humanity. So it, in other words, we're not just protecting ourselves, we're protecting some young peasant girl who's six years old living on a farm in Pakistan. We're protecting, you know, a socialite living in Paris. We're, we're ensuring the security of, you know, uh, some nomads on the Russian tundra or, or you know, uh, some citizens in a cafe in Bolivia. This is important, folks. It is, it is of nuclear significance. Not quite a word, but I think you get my point, right? So Project Galileo, rather than being a waste of money and time, is actually one of the best investments we can make in humanity's future because it secures nuclear assets. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you all have a wonderful day and be well, be safe.